Welcome to this new video about handle exercises for princess and I am Ricardus and Musicus Practicus and today we practice with the exercise number 16. Hey, before starting with the video, download the 100 pages free ebook of all handle exercises I prepared for give you a better experience. In this ebook you find all the exercises with the bass alone, all the exercises on a keyboard tablature, that means you can do every exercise in writing, some tips that can be useful for doing well the exercises, and a possible realization of each exercise. Download it for free by the link in the description. In this video, we practice with the seventh chord. In the last video about handle exercises, we have been practicing with a chord that was the suspension 7-6. In this way. Six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. In this movement, the bass is not moving with the middle voice, it's moving with the upper voice that plays playing parallel thirds. Okay, in this case, it's the middle voice, but it could be also the upper voice. So, what we can do now? Let's move the bass. Seven, okay. Fifth down, another seven. Fourth up, another seven. Fifth down, another seven. Fourth up, another seven. This succession is a pattern, obviously, a pattern of successions of seventh in this way. We start on a consonance and we go to a seven. Okay. Now, we have a third and a seventh. So this is the seventh that must resolve now, in this way. But if at the same time of this resolution I move the bass, a fourth up or a fifth down, this note, this voice that was the seventh before, now is the third. And the middle voice that was the third now is the seventh. So what happens? It happens that in the two upper voices, the three and the sevenths continue changing their position according to the movement of the bass. Three, seven, seven, three. Three, seven, seven, three. Three, seven, seven, three. Practice in this way. Start with the sixth and then Go to the seventh and ask yourself, okay, what's this note? Three. And this seven. Right. Let's go down. Okay. Seven. Look. D A. Right. Seven. Okay. D D three. Right. Now. Okay. Three. And seven. Okay. This is seven, yes? Three. In this way you will resolve and fix if you have some problem, if you have some doubt about this exercise and this pattern. Okay, so let's start with three typical uh, passages that we can find in a through bass in this way. So, three five chord, okay, with five voices, I have this seventh chord. Now I go up, seventh chord with five voices. One, two, three, four, five, then seven, then seven, 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 and if I have five voices, all the chords with the right hand are complete chords because we have the three, the five, and the seven. And then we have this is the root position: the three, the five, and the seven. And then again, three, five, seven. And then in the root position, three, five, and seven. But what happens if I play this with only three voices in the right hand and one in the bass? So, four voices, three, five chord, okay, three, five, and seven, complete. Three, seven, eight, 
that's not complete. We don't have the fifth. And this is what happened when we have a normalization of 777 with four voices, one in the bass and three in the other three voices. Complete, incomplete, complete, incomplete, and complete. So we have a succession of complete, incomplete, complete, incomplete, complete, incomplete. Then let's see another example with only three voices, one in the bass and two in the two upper voices. We can use this last example when we have a bass that is fast, okay? In this way, because playing with five voices could be, can be really heavy for the style and the music. If you're playing maybe, I don't know, an allemanda, okay? Or other dances that doesn't need a powerful basso continuo, this is too much, it's too much. So we can play only with three voices. We have three, five and three, okay? Three, seven, 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 three, seven eight. That is the example and the pattern of the previous video, suspensions. Suspension seven, six with only a little leap between one note and the next one in the bass. Good. Let's pass now to our exercise. We are in E major, four sharps in the key, and the time is a common time. So let's play the bass. Okay, let's start now from the first bar. We have 3 5 chord, then 6 chord, so we don't change anything. 4 and 3. You already know this chord, this suspension. Now, the 7th. Ask yourself, what's the 7th of the next note in the bass? The next note is a C, so the 7th is the B. Do we have a B? Yes, we have it, so we keep in the same voice. Right, then, seven, the tenor uh, plays unison with the altus, then, seventh, then, the tenor in unison with the altus, okay, then, this one, okay, the seventh, now is G. Ask always yourself, or maybe visualize the seventh on the keyboard, okay? In, and what finger is playing the seventh? Now we go to the sixth, unison between altos and tenor. The tenor goes down, two for six chord, six chord, seven, seven, and the first line of the exercise is finished. Okay, let's play again this line from the beginning. Now we can play another, the same chord in another position, thanks to the octave leap in the bass. Generally, it is better having the third or a sixth in the top voice, on the top voice. So if you are on a, on a fifth, so third position, or if you are on an octave, so first position, take now the opportunity to go to the second position with the third. Okay? Seven with the sharp, three five chord, cadence, or if you want, you can go down and do the same, changing the position. Okay, now seven, 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 seven. In this 
but I played a different solution of 777 with four voices. Look, the tenor plays three, three, five, three, five, three, five, three. Five, three. It's another possibility. So we have unison, then we go to the fifth, okay? Unison, the tenor. Then, unison, here, we have only a 6, 7, 6, look, the bass is not moving, so we have 7, 6, not 7, 7. Okay, this is a chord with a sharp third, because we are making a modulation to C minor. 5, 6 chord, as you already know, and cadence. Okay, let's play now the second line. Okay, now beautiful this chord. Cadence to C minor, A major, okay, and then we continue with this flat that in this case is a natural scene. Seven, six, seven, now seven, okay, seven, seven, seven. So uh, three, five, cadence to A major. Let's recap this passage. Beautiful. Here we can stay on the same chord. We don't need to harmonize is not necessary. Okay, 3 5 chord, change position, 4, 3, you, you already know this passage. Now, at this point, I play this chord that is a 4 5, but if I want, I can play this other chord that is 2 4 6. I prefer this one because it's not so harsh as the 2 6 chord. It is, as we can say, it's not so heavy. Okay. Okay, six. And now a big succession of seven. Seven, 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 seven. seven. Look what's happening in the two middle voices. Now they move with parallel thirds in this way. So, let's recap now this exercise from the beginning. Can you see with your hand? Consider that this method has been used to teach music from the Middle Ages until the early 19th century. All the great musicians whose music captivates and moves us learned the basics of music starting right here, with a simple hand that I have drawn on a globe, which encapsulates all the elements of music, the great scale, hexachords, clefs, notes and melodies, everything in the palm of one hand. It is true that it is not so easy to learn this system at the beginning. It is all based on a series of musical relationships and ratios which are different from modern music theory. The historical sources are written in ancient Italian, making them accessible to only a few. Furthermore, the way the ancients write is not always so clear. 
However, if you have as passionately curious as I am, and you would love to learn how to sing like a true Renaissance or Baroque musicus practicus, take a look to Fami et me fa estota musica method. In English, so it will be very easy for you to understand everything from A to Z. 13 stages that are well organized and ordered. Start from stage 1 and gradually progress to stage 13, following the step-by-step -step order proposed in this journey. Examples, images and practical exercises that visually teach you what to do, how to do it and why to do it. Oh, and in the end, we will do a test together. Learn more here.